So what's new in Dynamics in D365? So everybody who's on D365, for the customers that are already on and those who are coming, Microsoft always um, twice a year has a major release update. Um, we call them waves. And these waves, what they do is they're bringing you up to date and you are always max, uh, maximum allowed is two versions to be behind. This is important because what it's doing is it's securing you and also ensuring that your business is always up to date with the latest technology. And what this does is this enables you and your companies to then either adopt these changes or um, get us at Walker Scott, we can assist you in being able to do it. Um, uh, there will be a recording available and we will also be supplying the PowerPoint presentation um, post this um, demo. So um, without further ado, uh, dear, uh, do, I'm going to hand over to our team and Ruby, you're going to start first cab off the rank. Yep. Yeah. Hello everyone, I'm Ruby Tan, one of the finance consultants from um, Walker Scott. So I'm going to introduce some recent features in Dynamics 365 Finance and Operations in Finance Stream um, version 10.0.43. Um, these updates are part of Microsoft's broader initiative to enhance automation and accuracy in financial operations. By leveraging these features, you can firstly automate the AR and AP foreign currency revaluation, issue prepayment invoice to customers before delivering goods or services, and also automate access bleeding across different books. So they are all enabled via the feature management workspace. Now, the first feature I'm going to introduce is the process automation for foreign currency revaluation in both accounts receivable and accounts payable. This feature is designed to streamline the foreign currency revaluation process, reducing manual work and improving financial accuracy. Let's take a look on um, how it works and what makes it so powerful. So I will take you through to Dynamics and have a look on how it works. So after enabling um, the feature under the accounts, pay both accounts payable and accounts receivable and under periodic tasks, now we have an extra option called the foreign currency revaluation automation. Um, so when we click into that, you will be guided to the process automation um, scheduling screen. And right now you will be able to set up the process automation for AP foreign currency revaluation, for example. And you can um, also schedule it across different legal entities. And when I create the series in the setup, you can specify the recurrence um, pattern here. Let's say I'm going to run this um, foreign currency revaluation every um, fourth day of the month. And then in next, this here, when you're scheduling the automation, there are two new fields here that give you a precise control over the dates used for revaluation. The first one is the number of days adjustment for date of rate, which tells the system how to calculate the date for the exchange rate. Let's say if I put minus five, since I'm running this every fourth, um, every fourth day of the month, when I put minus five, it will automatically take the rate um, for the, the last day of the previous month. So similarly, for the number of days adjustment for consider date, and which sets the day for the revaluation transaction. And then also you can filter which transactions to be included in the automation, which works just the same as in the manual process, but now fully automated. And finally, there's a calendar view here. You will notice that um, each occurrence, you can monitor and adjust each occurrence as needed, ensuring everything stays aligned with the financial needs. For example, you might move a scheduled run to a different date if required. So when the scheduled date arrives, the system will automatically execute the revaluation process according to the settings. So overall, this feature empowers the finance team to automate routine tasks, saving time and ensuring consistency in the financial reports. Now let's get, go back to the PowerPoint. The next feature is the prepayment customer invoice. This functionality allows businesses to issue prepayment invoice to the customers before delivering goods or services. 
um, enhancing cash flow management by collecting payment upfront and also secure the prepayment to reduce any financial risk. So requesting advance payment will also enhance customer commitment, which provides a clear tracking of all of the prepayment amounts, aiding in financial reports and compliance. So let's walk through how to set it up and we can jump into dynamics afterwards for a demonstration for this customer prepayment invoice process. So after enabling this feature, we will um, there are some required um, configuration in, in the dynamics. Uh, we will need to create the sales category, set up at least one to link to the revenue account used for the prepayments, which set up in the inventory posting profile. And after enabling this feature, there will be a new posting type called customer prepayment, which allow us to set up which sales category is posting to which um, revenue account and allows for differentiation in financial reporting if you have multiple sales categories. Now, um, this, pro this here process automation will utilize the background processes here for the automation so that the automatic settlement posting can be, can be completed between the prepayments and the final invoice. Now, the next setup is also crucial in the accounts receivable parameters, which give us some control over the prepayment process in order to align with company needs. For example, this one here, the first one is whether you can check um, the sales order confirmation is required before issuing any prepayment invoice. And also there is a prepayment invoice application policy, which um, said if it is a notification, it will be a manual application for the prepayment. If it is automatic, it will be an automatic um, prepayment application upon the full payment receipt for the prepayment invoice. Now, um, just as normal, there will be some uh, number sequence setup for prepayment invoice voucher and also reversal and reversal voucher. And last but not least, there is an option to specify the prepayment invoice printout template for electronic reporting. So you can print out the um, prepayment invoice using the electronic reporting. Now let's go to um, Dynamics and we can have a look at how to um, apply this customer prepayment invoice. So um, navigate to the sales order form and select the sales order that you would like to do a prepayment. And now after enabling this feature under the invoice tab, there is a prepayment section here. So we can create a prepayment proposal for this particular sales order. We click edit. First of all, we have to se select the sales category. Let's say the prepayment that set up earlier. And then now we uh, we can choose the prepayment type, whether it's a percentage of the total amount or a fixed amount. So in my example, I would choose um, the fixed amount, let's say $50 for the prepayment. And then this, you can just save the prepayment proposal and go back one step. And navigate back to this um, sales order page and there is a prepayment invoice um, button here which bring um, the payment prepayment proposal up to this um, invoice. You can see the prepayment invoice line, which is the $50 that I just input. And then here you can see the prepayment status is open right now. So I can just post this invoice so that this prepayment invoice can be posted. And you can see this has been posted and then prepayment status will be changed to pending right now. So the next step will be um, once the customer pays this prepayment, we will record the payment and settle the invoice in the usual way, just like the standard invoices using the customer payment journal. And after paying that, after that payment journal has been uh, posted, the prepayment status will be changed to um, received. And after this prepayment invoice is received, the apply prepayment button will be enabled. So you can apply this prepayment to the sales order um, uh, manually, or if you choose the automatic uh, policy in the parameters, it will just apply when the prepayment invoice is fully paid. 
So, um, so when the earlier activated background task in the process automation has run, the prepayment invoice will be reversed and the settlement of the prepayment invoice reversal will be done. So there is a um, little example right now here. Let's say the sales order invoice is this total amount after the prepayment has been has been posted and applied to that um, sales order invoice. When the sales in order invoice is posted, so everything will be net off, and you can see the balance will be the total invoice amount deducted by the prepayment amount. So this is what the result will be after using the customer prepayment um, invoice feature. So this feature is particularly um, beneficial for businesses dealing with high value or custom orders where securing payment before delivery is crucial. So by integrating prepayment invoices to the um, sales process, the companies can safeguard their revenue streams and maintain healthier cash flow. Now, next, it will be, uh, let's look at another key automation feature, which is automated um, split transaction posting to derive books. These features allow um, us to split an asset and automatically post the relevant transaction to, to derive books. Basically, when a, when a FX asset is split, the split transaction will be posted to both your accounting books as well as your tax books. So previously, before this feature, it is a two-step process where we will need to perform the split function for each book, but right now it's automatic. It is automatic. Now let's move on to um, D365. And in the fixed asset list page, we can just select any fixed asset that we want to split. Let's say, take for example, this building 01. I can just click books to view the books for this um, fixed asset. You can see there are four books here with the accounting books and some other books here. So um, select um, these books and then under the function is just the split fixed asset. We can specify the target fixed asset to be split to. Let's say the um, let's say the building 021 and select the books that's to be split. And here I can just specify the percentage to be split and the journal name. So once this journal has been posted, um, the split transactions will be automatically posted as well. And here's um, just another example of how um, the result will be after posting that FA journal for the split transaction. You can see um, the acquisition and acquisition adjustment has been splitted for all of the four books. So you can see all transactions will be here. And right now it is just automatically posted all um, um, split transaction over to all books. So this simplifies the process of reallocating asset values across multiple books and ensure that both acquisition and acquisition adjustment transaction are appropriately recorded across all relevant books. So to streamline the whole process. So I hope this has given you a clear overview of these features. Now I will pass on to Shelley for other exciting features in supply chain management space.